since there's so much to try to do. You do not like chiffon. You don't like chiffon. We're going to pick up in Siege of Gondor. We just finished with Mary being taken up into the saddle by Durnhelm. Right? Um, or that's where we left off the other day. We're going to pick up with the Siege of Gondor, pages 8, 10, I think, and following. Um, Pip, um, my mind will wake up in a moment. Faramir arrives in Gondor at Minas Tirith, <clears throat> and he sees Pippin, top of page 11, and says, Whence come you? A, a, a halfling. And Gandalf kind of explains how he came with him, etc., etc. Um, page 8 to 12. Bottom of 811, Faramir explains he's met another couple of halflings and tells Gandalf where they were headed when they parted. Kirith Ungol, top of 812. Morgul Vale? The time, Faramir, the time. You know, when? When did this happen? And he's like, uh, two days ago. Okay. So Gandalf's thinking, two days ago, how far could Fredo and you know Sam have gotten? Blah 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 blah. So <clears throat> Denethor then enters the discussion, okay, when Faramir explains, now notice, Faramir's talking with Gandalf Pippin and Denethor in Denethor's hall, Denethor's sitting on his steward throne, not the king's throne, but the little throne next to it, um, and he's kind of ignoring his father, because Gandalf's asking him questions, and he kind of finishes and turns to his father, and says, right almost in the exact middle of the page, page 812, I hope that I have not done ill. And he looks at his father. Notice, he says that. Then we're told he looks at his father. Okay. Is he saying, I hope that I have not done ill to Gandalf? Or is he saying it to Denethor? Denethor is the one who replies, ill? Why do you ask? The men were under your command. Or do you ask for my... What's his point? Come on, be a leader. You're the captain. You issue, don't second guess. I mean, this is good advice. You know, you make a decision, you go with it, kind of a thing. Or do you ask for my judgment on all your deeds? Your bearing is lowly in my presence. It is long, it is long now since you turned from your own way at my counsel. What's Denethor's point? You don't usually listen to me, so why are you asking? Okay, so what's his real point? Who does he listen to? Gandalf. Gandalf. What's, it, what's the implication? Even though the other person hasn't been named. It's going to be very short. Boromir. Boromir listened. Boromir did what Daddy wanted. Okay? So he says, you know... You have spoken skillfully as ever, but I have not seen your eye fixed on the friend here. Little father jealousy there, father envy. Seeking whether you said well or too much. That's why he's keeping his eye on Gandalf. He's kind of like, let's see, what do I say about Frodo and what Frodo was carrying? Your father's old, but not yet dotard. I'm old, but I'm not senile. I can see in here, as was my want, that is, as, just as I could before, long years ago, little of what you have half said, notice, I've read what you've said, and you've only said half, or left unsaid is now hidden for, from me. I perceive much more than you are aware of, Faramir. I know the answer to many riddles. Why does he bring up riddles? Seek the sword that was broken. In Imladris it dwells. Oh, in Isildur's bane. Those are all riddles. Okay? Alas, alas, little poor of here. If what I've done displeases you, my father, I wish I'd known your counsel before the burden of so witty a judgment. 
was thrust on me. You should have told me what you wanted. Okay? Would that have availed to change your judgment? If you had known, I want this thing, would it have changed? In Peter Jackson's mind, yes. In Tolkien's mind, no. Why? What did Faramir tell Frodo and Sam? We men of Gondor are truth tellers. I said, if I would not, you know, saw this thing on the side of the road, I would not pick it up. Now I know what this thing is, the supreme weapon, and I still won't. Okay? You would still have done just so, I deem. I know you well. Ever your desire is to appear lordly and generous as a king of old, gracious, gentle. Are those bad qualities? <laughs> to be gracious, to be gentle, to be lordly, like a king of old? That may well befit one of high race if he sits in power and peace. Notice, not just if he sits in power, but if he sits in power during times of peace. Yeah, you can be all high-minded you want. What's the for his point? Are you can't be all high-minded. Okay? I'm trying to decide if I should go with a political analogy I want. Yeah. No. Because <laughs> it'll be like the United States. Half of you will like it, and the other half of you will hate it. You know? all agree not to get or maybe all of you will just totally hate it. So, <laughs> desperate oh, hours. Wait. Desperate hours. In desperate hours, gentleness may be repaid with death. This is what you're going to get, Faramir, if you go all gentle. Okay? Yeah, I'm going to go. <laughs> what is one of the things, and again, I don't care your politics, what is one of the things that so angers an awful lot of people about Trump. That is, that distinguishes him from previous Republicans. Out of peace. Okay. His arrogance. Okay. Lack of experience. Okay. Well, I mean, you run a billion dollar company. That's that's a lot of CEO experience. Um how he speaks, what do you mean? I just, he doesn't share something as much. Okay, you know, that's true. Honest. But, I mean. It's less sugar-coating. He doesn't or, care. He doesn't care. He doesn't think things through. Or he doesn't He's think not. things through, possibly. What else? I mean, all that's true. Um, <clears throat> what's the difference, say, between Trump and Romney? And I don't mean Mormon, non-Christian, whatever. There's speech writers involved. Okay, speech writers possibly involved. You hear that? I'm, I'm being too oblique. Um, is there demeanor? Well, it's like a refinement. Like okay, demeanor, refinement. You know, Mr. Morality and Mr. Good Behavior. And Trump doesn't give a damn. In other words, Trump's what? He's a brawler. He's a street fighter. I mean, he's a street fighter. Yeah. I mean, that's like a very, that sounds like a craze. <laughs> like, I mean, it would depend on what, it depend on, you know, is the street fighter fighting for you or fighting against you? Would, would be whether or not it's a prey. The point I'm getting is what is Denethor saying? In the past, in the past, the, the Bush Republican, the Romney Republican, during time of peace, that's all fine. The country club Republican. That's not Trump, right? Though he owns country clubs. I mean, he's not the member. He owns the, the whole kid. Okay? If you take that analogy, what he's saying is, now's the time for a fighter. See, and one of the things that so angers both left and right is that Trump doesn't, and, and this was said before he was elected, after he was elected, but before he was inaugurated. And he came out and said, I'm going to be so presidential. You've never seen president. But he hasn't, right? He hasn't, quote, unquote, acted presidential. Because what does he do? He calls people morons. No president in the past publicly <laughs> has said that. 
privately. Yeah, well, making yes. all sorts of nicknames. Because we've got all kinds of recordings of people who haven't realized the mic is live. <clears throat> I'm going to kick his effing. <laughs> you know. I mean, you can listen to recordings now, for example, of LBJ. Woo! LBJ would make Trump blush. I mean, LBJ, I mean, woo! You want to talk real racism? LBJ was a master. <laughs> okay. So what's what's Denethor saying? The time to be nice has passed. Why? We've got Sauron over there. Okay. Times are times are bleak. Times are bad. If you take that analogy that I was trying to make, which I think I totally failed, you know, what's Trump kind of saying? What's being nice done good for Republicans in the past? Have they gotten the media to love them? No, it's only when they, you know, are nice. So he's like, well, I'm going to be damned if I do and damned if I might as well. <laughs> I might as well go with the whole hog. That's dinner for. What's Faramir's kind of response? So be it. Okay, you want me to be hard as nails? Fine, I'll be hard as nails. He gets, I mean, there, there's going to be a little bit more conversation, but he's going to go off and go off to the battle, the Battle of Pelennor Fields. What's Faramir going to do? I won't use it because it's a crude phrase. I'll use part of it. He's going to go blank to the wall. I mean, he's going to go, literally, we're going to see him, even though we don't have this in Tolkien, he's going to go berserker, Old Norse phrase. Anybody know what it means? Literally, bear skin, it's actually shirt. We have a character like this in the Middle Earth, Beorn, who is a shapeshifter. And what does Bjorn become at night? A big old bear. In the Norse mythology, in the Norse, in the Viking sagas and stuff, this is what Viking warriors would do when they go into battle. They go, eight, you know what, crazy. So you're sitting there swinging their sword. You don't go up close to them and go, hey, you know, Yar, uh, Lars. Because <laughs> Lars is going to swing and cut you too. Okay? That's what Faramir essentially becomes in that battle. Yes. Isn't the point of all this though that Denethor and his ideology is kind of bad? Though? Yes, it's the whole point. <laughs> I'm like, Denethor is wrong. Denethor is wrong. Denethor is saying, even though we are at such and such a point, or because we are at such and such a point, we have to throw all previous models of behavior out. Except it's not war that gets rid okay. of. Yes and no. Yes and no. I mean, Gandalf's going to later, later on say, force of arms isn't going to win this battle. Okay? So let's take that analogy that I used, the p political analogy. Um, so Denethor is wrong within Tolkien's cosmology. I mean, he's making it pretty clear Denethor is wrong. Okay? So what's the, in the modern analogy, let's use from the Republican side, who are those who say Trump's wrong? They're affectionately, or not so much, called Never Trumpers. The Bill Crystals, and I can't remember, you know, David French is the guy who lives in Tennessee, a bunch of folks like that. They say, no, 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 we got to hold back to, or hold on to, the virtuous behavior still. You can't become a street brawler, because if you become a street brawler, what do you become? What do you do? You lower yourself to the other side's kind of behavior, essentially, okay? So be it, so be it. We're real, okay? So Denethor, you know, I, I see your so be it, and I raise you a so be it. <laughs> but not with your death only, Lord Faramir. Yeah. That is, your gentleness isn't going to help anything, not with your death only, but with the death also of your father and of all your people, whom it is your part to protect. In other words, you can't just go willy-nilly off into this battle and die. Why? Because you now are the only heir left. You've got to survive to protect your people. 
So what kind of position did you put Faramir in? Rock, hard place. You're damned if you do and damned if you don't, Faramir. He's not going to please his father, right? <laughs> Unless, here, let me get on my horse, right back down to Deer Thunder, right up the tunnel, find Frodo, take it from him, and come back. That's the only way. Well, that ain't going to happen. So, Faramir, do you wish then that our places had been exchanged? It's a nice, fancy, kind of archaic way of saying. So you'd rather I was dead and Boromir was alive? Okay, put yourself what a wonderful thing to say to your son. in his shoes. Imagine this, you know, you've got a sibling, your parents, and you're saying, so, dad, mom, would you rather I die or? Yes. <laughs> yes, I wish that indeed. Ouch. <laughs> Here, let me give you a band-aid for that, you know. For Boromir was loyal to me. And no, and I think if I were directing, he looks at Gandalf. No wizard's pupil. That is, you're loyal to him. Woo! Talk about a break in the family. Talk about dysfunctional families. Just wait till we get to Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> he would have remembered his father's need. Need. Is it? Is it the need? Denethor thinks there's only one way Gondor comes out of this alive. The ring. That's it. Which is one of the reasons why so many critics said, oh, it's got to be the atomic bomb. If only we had the atomic bomb. Okay. It's almost like Denethor has given up on the side of good, practically. Because, like, you know, you know, they, left to their own devices, have no way of defeating, you know, Sauron and his forces. Take two words out of everything you said, and you're right. Almost like. It's not almost, and it's not like. It is. He is full of despair. And we're gonna we're gonna see it brought out very clearly. Okay. He would not have squandered what fortune gave. He would have brought me a mighty gift. And Fearmere says, I would ask you to remember why it was that I, not he, was an Athelian. On one occasion at least your counsel has prevailed, not long ago. What's that mean? What is he? What did he just say? It's his fault that Boromir went. Yes, you're the one who said Boromir should go north. Because who did the vision, the dream, the prophecy originally come to? Faramir. But oh no, you had to send Boromir, big, powerful, strong, mighty warrior Boromir. And he's dead. <laughs> Your fault, Dad. Talk about turning the tables. Talk about making that rift even bigger. <clears throat> it was the Lord of the city that gave the errand to him. Stir not the bitterness in the cup that I mixed for myself. In other words, yeah, I know. And you didn't have to pour salt into the wound. Okay. Would that this thing had come to me. Gandalf finally intervenes. He's just kind of sitting back and going, oh man, this is good family counseling. Get it all out in the open so we can, you know, shine the light of truth and all that nonsense. Boromir wouldn't have brought it to you. He's dead. He died well. Hmm. How did he die well? Killed a bunch of orcs. He's a warrior. Mm, manly thing to do. How else did he die well? He's trying to protect Mippin and Perry. Mippin and Perry. <laughs> or Pippin and Mary. I do portmanteau words all the time. Okay? Right before he died, he confessed to what he did. He confessed. He told Aragorn, I tried to take the ring. I failed. And Aragorn says, Nope, you didn't fail. 
by owning up to it. And even before then, what did he do? When Frodo puts the ring on. He says, Frodo, I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Oh, we do, right? The ring. He would have stretched out his hand to this thing and taking it, he would have fallen. He would have kept it for his own and he returned. He would not have known your son. He says, no, that's just because you didn't have Boromir in your hip pocket. My Boromir would never have said no to me. All right? And he finishes. I have in this matter more lore and wisdom than you deem. More lore, teaching, that's what it means there, in wisdom. In other words, Gandalf, I know more than you think I Gandalf says, okay, I call your bluff. <laughs> What's your wisdom? Show me your cards. Enough to perceive that there are two follies to avoid. To use this thing is perilous. That's a folly. It's foolishness. At this hour to send it in the hands of a witless halfling, witless, brainless, <laughs> intellectless halfling into the land of the enemy. Now, imagine you're Pippin. And you're sitting there. Well, let me rephrase that. Imagine you're a hobbit smarter than Pippin. <laughs> and you're sitting there. And you listen to this. Wait, did he just say? Because he kind of implies that this is about all halflings. Did he just call me a, could just call me a moron? <laughs> so, as you have done, and this son of mine, that, is madness. So to use it is perilous. It could cause our destruction. But what you've done, it's madness. That's crazy. They want it. Could you put it in Sauron's backyard in control of a midget? Practically delivering things. Yeah. Okay. And what would you have done? That is, in your wisdom, neither. So what's the third choice? Didn't they debate that at the Council of Elrond? What do we do? What were some of the things they debated? We could use it. No, can't use it. So take that one off. What else can we do? Uh, hide, we it. hide it. Not forever. Not forever. We could throw it in the sea. Yeah, but the sea does what? It changes over time. What was sea becomes dry land. There it is. Uh, we could give it to Tom Bombadil. Because look what he can do with it. He can flip it up and put it on. It doesn't disappear. Somebody else puts it on. He says, hey, Frodo, come back. He has control of it. And Gandalf says, no, I'd rather say it has no mastery over him. He is his own master. It's more of the God manifestation thing I did. Okay? But why would he not take it? He didn't make it. It's not my problem. You screwed it up. You deal with it. We can send it to the gods over in Valinor. They're going to say, return to send or address not known. <laughs> not our problem, your problem. So what do they come down to? Uh, keep it or destroy it. Can't keep it because it'll tempt us. Destroy it. Yeah, how do we do that? Well, you got to go find Mount Doom. It's not hard. It's a pretty big volcano. But then you have to find... The cracks of doom, the actual place within the mountain, because the implication is there's more than one vent. Yeah. You got to find the right place. And there's not like a, you know, with a pointing finger <laughs> this way to the cracks of doom. Right? I usually leave all cursed rings in this one, yeah. not that one. He says, I would not, for any more argument, have set this thing at a hazard beyond all but a fool's hope. Risking our utter ruin if the enemy should recover what he lost. It should have been kept hidden, hidden, dark, and deep. Not used, I say. What? Unless. <laughs> well, what always happens to unless? It becomes. I need it. Yeah. I need it now, in fact. Make a caveat. Right? Maybe. You think as is your want, that is, as is your will, my lord of Gondor, only. You're thinking only of Gondor. You're not thinking of Ithilien. You're not thinking of Rivendell, the Shire, South Harad, Far Harad, Rune. You're not even thinking of Mordor and the people that are enslaved in Mordor. 
Yet there are other men and other lives, notice, and time still to be. Remember back in the shadow of the past, we didn't talk about it. Frodo asks, or when Frodo says, you know, I wish it hadn't come to me, Gandalf says, so do all men in such, all people, in such situations. That is, they all wish. Why me? Why, you know, like I, I use the image of Bush in 9-11. Then he sits there, and Andy Card tells him, Mr. President, and he probably thought immediately, why didn't this happen under Clinton? But then Gandalf goes on and says, but we have to use what time we have to do what? To pass on to those who come after us, he says, as tilled in weed-free ground as we can. That is, it's our job in our day and time to deal with what? Our problems. So what are our problems? Our day and time that have repercussions later on. Some people might say the climate crisis, if it is a crisis, okay? Some people might say Social Security. I, I'm starting to think I'm actually going to get some because I'm getting close. <laughs> I don't think you guys are going to get squat, okay? Yeah. What else? Louder? The health care crisis. Health care? Housing. 12 million people without health care or something like that. Housing. I don't see how people can afford apartments in Murfreesboro. I mean, some of the apartments that are 2020, like, what kind of jobs are they? They've got to be working in Nashville, okay? Because my kids can't afford them. Other kinds of problems. I mean, the generic problems that are always with us, poor, hungry, etc., destitute, etc., etc. But there are other specific problems. Stuff like ISIS. How about, you know, ISIS? How about, you know, the quote-unquote lack of faith in our quote-unquote institutions, whatever those institutions are? Government? Justice? I no longer, I'm just personal, I no longer believe in our quote-unquote justice system. Because it's been so abused, and because we've seen so many cases, not just with the recent stuff with the FBI, but going back 20 years of, quote-unquote, famous people who have one kind of justice applied to them, whereas if it were me, if I didn't pay my taxes, and I owed a million in taxes, I'd be in jail. I would lose everything I had person on my wife's side of the family, lose everything. House, the whole kit and caboodle, because they said she owed back taxes. She didn't. She eventually won after about 10 years mm -hmm. of fighting the IRS. Got the house back, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And yet, you know, when Obama became president, he named a guy, powerful guy, member of the Fed Board of Governors, named him to be his secretary of the Treasury. And he owed over a million dollars in back taxes. And it was just kind of disappeared. Disappeared. <clears throat> Al Sharpton still owes, I think it is, over five million dollars for his 1988 presidential run. Okay? So Gandalf is saying, we got to think not only now, but of those who come after us too. So what's his point? We have to think of destroying the ring now, because it's a problem now. The ring won't just disappear. It won't just disappear. You can't just wish it away. So, Denethor, and where will other men look for help if Gondor falls? Okay, you want me to think of other men. What's going to happen to Rowan if Gondor falls? In, in our world, what you know? What would be Gondor, America. America, or if you're British, you know, England? <laughs> Not really. And and then what would be the other men? What would Canada do if America falls? Ooh, drink even more, man. Okay. What would NATO do if the United States pulled out? <laughs> it crumbled. Does Denethor have a good point? Yes, he does. There, there has to be a strong, you know, defense, so to speak. So he says, here's what I would do. 
If I had this thing now in the deep vaults of this citadel, Fort Knox, or Fort Meade, you know, where they house all the dangerous bugs, chemical warfare and such, then we wouldn't shake with dread under this gloom, fearing the worst. Why? Because if it was way, 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 way down there under lock and key, and if Sauron himself came knocking at the gates of Minas Tirith, what could he do? I could go way, 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 way down there, turn the key, and get it. <clears throat> That's his whole point. If you do not trust me to endure the test, you do not know me yet. Gandalf, I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because Gandalf doesn't trust himself. Had I done so, I could have sent this thing hither to your keeping and spared myself and not as much anger. Really, because I wouldn't have had to die and be resurrected. You know? And now hearing you speak, I trust you less. No more than Boromir. Nay, no, stop it. Just stop it. Stay your wrath. I do not trust myself in this. Because Denethor thinks he's being slammed. Gandalf's like, you know who I am. I don't trust me. I didn't trust Elrond. I didn't trust Galadriel. Definitely didn't trust Saruman, you know. And for a moment, the eyes of Denethor glowed again as he faced Gandalf and Pippin, felt once more the strain between them. If I, if you, if we... Okay. So, he turns to more practical matters. Is the garrison at Osgiliath strong? Is that fortress well defended? No, it's not. Okay. I sent a company of men to strengthen it. Denethor, not enough, I deem. Notice, well done, son. Yeah, but you probably screwed that one up too. Okay. It is there that the first blow will fall. They will have need of some stout captain there. Hint, hint, wink, wink. You go out to the front. Okay. Whenever that happens in a battle, it's not a good. So, Denethor uh, Faramir gets ready to leave. Okay. And Pippin asks Gandalf, Is there any hope for Frodo? I mean, well, mostly for Frodo. Gandalf, never much hope, just a fool's hope. But man, when I heard the of Thunder, all that scared me. Why? Why that way? Okay. So, skip a bunch. <coughs> Page 816. Osgiliath is overrun. Okay. <clears throat> Fairmere is getting ready to leave his father. And. Or Osgiliath isn't yet overrun. Eight, bottom 816. Faramir says to Denethor, I do not oppose your will, sire. Notice, sire. King, but it also means progenitor of me, but it's kind of an official title. He doesn't say dad, father. I do not oppose your will, sire, since you are robbed of Boromir, I will go and do what I can in his stead. I will do what I think Boromir would have done. If you command it, I do. Then farewell. But if I should return, think better of me. And Denethor gives kind of the old classic. He alludes to it. The old classic Spartan wives response. <clears throat> that depends on the manner of your return. If you know that Spartan warriors, they get ready to go off in battle, and they'd tell their wives, you know, think well of me, and they'd say, that depends on the manner of your return, meaning whether you have come bearing your shield or are born on your shield. If you come bearing your shield, well done. But also if you were born on your shield, that's kind of a well done. You, you died. What does Eowyn want? Not in not. glory. Okay. So, Fearmere goes out. Okay. We see Gandalf and Pippin and stuff. We're going to skip a bunch. Fearmere is attacked. The Nazgul come. 
right? Faramir's brought back in with a fever. He's unconscious. He's mumbling. Gandalf takes command of the city, page 824, because Denethor gives up when Faramir is brought back in. Okay? Oh, Page 825, we hear Denethor. The first circle, there, there are seven circles of the city. Okay? The citadel is in the innermost, highermost circle. Somebody comes to, a messenger comes to Denethor, page 825, and says, the first circle of the city is burning, Lord. What are your commands? You are still the Lord and steward, not all will fall on the thread here. And he says, men are flying from the walls and leaving them unmanned. Why? Why do the fools fly? Better to burn sooner than late, for burn we must. Okay. What's he mean? We're all going to die. Might as well die sooner than later. Give up. Give up. Why flee from death? Because what does that imply? Death is still chasing you. Death's going to catch up to you. So why not just sit down and let it take you? Go back to your bonfire. <laughs> bonfire. The city's burning. Go back and roast weenies. Roast marshmallows. I, I will go now to my pyre. That is my funeral pyre. Bring me Faramir. We're going to go up together. So he's going to have a big old funeral pyre fit, lit, or set. He's going to lay Faramir on it. He's going to lay down beside him and say, strike the match, boys. Just send us to the other world. Okay? Pippin's like, no, no, he's no, you're not dead yet, so you shouldn't die yet. What did Eowyn ask Aragorn? Can I not spend my life as I choose? And Aragorn says, few can do so with honor. Well, that's exactly what Denethor is attempting to do here. To spin, to give away, to waste his life. Okay? So, Pippin leaves. Why? Gotta get Gandalf. Gotta get Gandalf. Gotta get Gandalf. Okay. So, Pippin tells Baragon. Baragon runs up to try to stop Denethor. Okay. Pippin goes down and finds Gandalf. Page eight twenty nine. Last page of the chapter. Orcs are out there with Grom, the big battering ram. They break open the gates of Minas Tirith, something that has never happened in the multi-thousand year history of the city. Okay? And we're told, in rode the Lord of the Nazgul. Now who is the Lord of the Nazgul? He's the witch king of Angmar. He's the captain of the nine. He's the greatest of the nine kings that Sauron gave rings to. Okay. Where have we heard about him before, other than obliquely? Back in um, on the Barrow Downs, when Tom Bombadil rescues the hobbits from the Barrowite, okay, destroys the Barrowite, and he brings all the buried treasure that's in the Barrow out, sets it out to the light of the sun, so that he, pretty much anybody who finds it can use it. And when he does that, he gives each of the hobbits a sword or dagger. He says, you can use these. And he explains to them something about their history, how those swords were made in Gondolin, an old elf kingdom, for the purpose of fighting the forces of the witch king of Angmar. And they were woven with spells for fighting that individual. So, in comes the Witch King of Angmar. A great black shape against the fires, beyond he loomed up, grown to a vast menace of despair. In rode the Lord of the Nazgul, under the archway that no one, that no enemy ever yet had passed, and all fled before his face. All save one. So he comes in. What, what is the Nazgul? That's the thing that he writes. Maybe. 
Tolkien's never specifically clear. Sometimes the Nazgul are referred to as the wraiths themselves, the former kings. Sometimes it sounds like the Nazgul is the dragon-like thing that they ride on. Because when they're not riding on those, they're riding on horses, right? Like when they make their way to Weathertop, right? But they're referred to as the Black Riders then. They're not referred to as Nazgul. So probably the dragon-like thing. So he comes riding in on a big like black dragon, almost like a Balrog, right? Okay? And then there's Gandalf sitting there on Shadowfax. Little, kind of frail, holding a stick, you know, Gandalf. Shadowfax, who alone among the free horses of the earth endured the terror, unmoving, blah, blah. So Gandalf says, you cannot enter here. You shall not pass. You shall not pass. Go back to the abyss prepared for you. Go back. Fall into nothingness that awaits you and your master. Black Rider flings back his hood and notice, what's there? A crown, but no head. Just fire shown between it and the shoulders. Now, I don't think that means like, you know, a couple of big lighters. It's like flamethrower fire, okay? Old fool, old fool, this is my hour. Do you not know death when you see it? Die now and curse in vain. The die now and curse in vain is almost an exact line from the Old Testament, from the book of Job. After Job is touched by Satan, his wife says to him, curse God now and die. Okay? Tolkien translated the book of Job for the Jews. Job or Jonah? I think it was Job. Job. For, the, Job. for the Jerusalem Bible. Okay? Yeah. Which tells us he also knew Hebrew. Disgusting. So, <laughs> Gandalf doesn't move. And in that very moment, we're told, somewhere off in Minas Tirith, some stupid rooster <laughs> crows. Shrill and clear, he crowed, wrecking, that is thinking, considering, nothing of wizardry or war, welcoming only the morning that in the sky, far from the shadows of death, was coming with the dawn. What is that? It's like a little mini eucatastrophe. That's not something you expect to happen at that point, right? Why in the world does the narrator draw our attention when there's utter death? about to be unleashed. What did Gandalf tell Denethor when he said, I too am a steward? If there is something that this night still blooms in the morning, well, that crow by the rooster is an indication of what? Life, dawn's coming. Cue the stupid little orphan Annie song. You know, so, well, it is. But something happens right after that. What happens after the cock crows? Cue your 1930s Hollywood Western. The white settlers are about to get slaughtered by the red engines. And who comes? The cavalry comes. Right? The riders of Rowan show up. At last. What's, what does at last imply? Finally. Took their time. You know. They're almost gone. They're obeying the speed limit. You know, when, as Denethor said, you know, forget the laws. Just so we get the right of the here. And now we go back. Tolkien keeps doing this. He takes us back to the time when the previous, you know, people started to take off. So Mary's now with Durnelm. They're skipping a bunch. They meet Gon, Buri Gon, and the, what are called the Woes Men. These are the men of the woods. Okay? And they ride on. <clears throat> Chapter 6, Battle of Pelennor Fields. Okay? Snowmane, Theoden's horse, because the Nazgul, with the Lord of the Nazgul on it, leaves the gate when it hears the horns. He's got to go out and buck up his troops. 
he comes, flies out, lands in Snowman, you know, probably as most of us would do, sees this big dragon-like creature, and hides up on its back legs, falls over, and Theoden is pinned <coughs> underneath it. Okay? And we're told, 840, 841, Theoden was not utterly forsaken. The knights of his house lay slain about him, or else mastered by the madness of their steeds were borne far away. But one stood there still, Durnham, the young faithful beyond fear. And he wept, for he had loved his lord as a father. So there's Durnhelm next to Theoden. And there's Mary, just not too far away, right? Because he was with Durnhelm on Durnhelm's horse. And Mary's kind of, you know, dazed. And he thinks to himself, king's man. King's man, you must stay by him. As a father, you shall be to me, you said. But his will made no answer. That is, he tells himself, come on, Mary, go get by Theoden. And his body says, <laughs> that way lies death. Out of the blackness, he hears Durnhelm speaking. Be gone, foul Dwemer Lake, Lord of Carrion. Carrion, leave the dead in peace. Why? Because you're not supposed to desecrate the dead, period. A cold voice answers. Come not between the Nazgul and his prey. That is, the thing I'm riding, it's going to eat your lord and the horse and probably the guys around it. <laughs> or he will not slay thee in thy turn. He will bury thee away to the houses of loveness, well, in a sick way, the houses of lamentation. Where what? Beyond all darkness, where thy flesh shall be devoured, and thy shriveled mind be left naked to the lidless eye. Your body will be destroyed, but your mind will stay alive. Why? Because what's the mind? What's being implied? The soul. And it will be what? It will be probed by sorrow. Do what you will. That is, go for it. But I will hinder it if I may. Hinder me, thou fool. No living man may hinder me. Then Mary heard of all sounds of that hour of the strangest. It seemed that Durnham laughed and said, Surprise! But no living man am I. You look upon a woman, Aelwyn I am, Aelman's daughter, Aelman the brother of Theoden. You stand between me and my lord and kin. Real important stuff there. Don't have time for this. But you need to know this. Sorry. Duty to Lord. Duty to Ken. This is from a guy named C.L. Wren, who took Tolkien's position at Oxford when Tolkien became king, right? Book called A Study of Old Age. So he calls it the fourfold Germanic ethic. And what he means by that is by ethic, the, the way of behavior, like the way of the warrior. Okay? And these are the, the four points that Germanic warriors all Believe in. Germanic meaning everybody either of Germanic stock, like in the Middle Ages, or descended of Germanic stock, like Anglo-Saxon warriors. So this applies to Anglo-Saxon. It applies to Vikings. It applies to German warriors in the 1100s, 1200s, 1300s. So like things like the Lay of the Nibelung or the Nibelungen Lied, which Wagner later translates into the Ring of the, of the Nibelung Cycle. It's all this. So it's got four parts. First, duty to your Lord. You are bound to your Lord. You have a responsibility to your Lord. Second, duty to kin. You've got a duty to your family. Okay? And not just your immediate modern day nuclear family, cousins, etc. Extended family to your tribe, as it were. Third, really important, duty to avenge. 
your Lord and or kin. So what? imagine if these are the same. It's a super duty. <laughs> and it, it, it ties up all of us. What is Durnhelm just said? You stand between me and my Lord and him. In other words, I'm going to stop you. Be gone if you be not deathless. He's not deathless. He's not immortal. He still exists as a shape. For living or dark undead, I, I, I'm going to smite you if you touch him. Okay? So the winged creature screams at her, but the ring wraith made no answer, as if in doubt. Like, do those old prophecies, are they gender neutral or are they gender specific? Wait, 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 is, wait, wait, is it anthropos or is it that other one? Wait, no? We pull up the blackboard. I need to figure this out real quick. And Mary's like, <clears throat> totally amazed. You know? It was Eowyn and it was Durnhelm also. And what happens? The beast swings its wing, waves its wings, whatever. It leaps into the air. It comes down right in front of Eowyn and he swings his mace. She holds up her shield arm with the shield. So he swings his mace. Maces are pretty heavy. The ball on it's like 16 pounds. Breaks the shield and arm. She falls. And he's like, <laughs> standing over her. And she just kind of goes <laughs> with the sword right through what would be his neck. But she doesn't do that all on her own. Because when he swings and hits her with the mace, what has Mary done? He's secretly crawled around. Because remember, we're the hobbits. Sly little devils. If they don't want to be seen, you can't see them. And he comes up behind and does what? Stabs them in the back of the knee. If you've ever had serious knee problems, I've had 10 surgeries to both knees. Okay? If you've ever had serious knee problems, not nice. Really, okay, he is, you know, like mini Satan and Kurt. Still not nice. Hits him in the back of the knee so that he falls forward. Falls down on his knees, and she just kind of goes <coughs> through the neck, and he's gone. What's left? The cloak, which is mere housing, as it were. Okay? Eowyn, uh, Mary carries out Eowyn. Eowyn? So how was Mary able to do that? He had a sword that was woven with spells to fight the witch king of Angmar and his forces. Here he is. How else? Not a man. Hobbit. Okay. So there's Mary standing there. Eowyn's passed out. Theoden's mostly dead, not totally. They get to talk for a minute. Mary's like, well, I'm never going to smoke weed anymore because, I mean, we were going to smoke together. And he goes, no, no, no. Smoke and remember me, etc. And then he dies, okay? So. Remember me, whatever you want. The battle turns. Why? I mean, killed her. Killed her. He's not even like a general. I mean, he's like the spiritual source, you know. And orcs go crazy. Fairmere has already been taken back in. Okay. So, the dead and wounded, the wounded, not the dead, the wounded get brought inside, except for Mary, right? Mm -hmm. Mary has to stumble in. Aelwin's picked up. Aelmer sees her. Rides her into, you know, Mary stumbles his way in. Okay. Chapter 7, Pyre of Denethor, 233, 32 minutes. Um, Pippin tells Gandalf about Denethor. Gandalf runs up to the House of the Dead. Uh, takes Faramir. Um, page 852, okay? Denethor tells his, you know, servant to light us up. Gandalf tells him no. Says, what are you doing? Faramir's not dead. We're not, we haven't lost yet. Denethor, 
Since when has the Lord of Gondor been answerable to thee? That is, who made you super steward <laughs> or sub king? Or may I command my own servant? You might, yeah, you can. But others may contest your will when it is turned to madness and evil. Where's Faramir? Well, he's inside. That is, we're going to light him up too. Gandalf, seeing the madness that was on him, feared that he had already done some deed. He goes inside, he grabs Faramir, he brings him out. Denethor says he won't wake again. He's already mostly dead. He'll soon be dead. And what does Denethor finally do that explains everything to Gandalf? He pulls out a palantir. And Gandalf's like, Stories were told that people saw way up in the tower a light. Okay. The only problem is, bottom of 853, Denethor says, I have seen more than thou knowest, great fool, thy hope is but ignorance. Go then and labor, etc., etc. A little space you may triumph on the field for a day, but against the power that now arises, there is no victory. That means what? Giving up hope. No hope. Total despair. Despair literally means out of space, hope, S-P-E-S, Latin, all right? So. Yeah, there are times where it's never worth to hide the ring if you hold on to a palantine. Denethor thought what when he looked into the palantir? What did he think he could do? He could bring up the channel he wanted he could make it do what he wanted it to do. What did he see when he looked into it? He looked what, what Sauron wanted him to see. And what did he see? <coughs> endless armies, endless troops. No matter how many you kill, more will come. It will be a war of attrition. That's why he says there is no there is no military victory over Sauron. He, he's got too many. It would be like, take nukes out of the equation. It'd be like the United States launching war against China. They've got 1.4 billion people. They could raise an army easily of probably three or 400 million. We've got 330 million people. We can maybe, maybe on a good day when everybody's healthy, raise an army of 15, 20 million. It'd, it'd be no match, okay? That's, that's all he sees. <coughs> so, he likes himself. What happens to the Palantir? It stays there in his hands. So that we're told anybody in after year who tried to look into the Palantir, what do they see? They see Denethor's face and the hands and fire. Not really what you want to try to use it for. Okay? So, houses of healing. Notice the captain of the Nazgul referred to the houses of lamentation. You'll be taken to Sauron's where you, will be, where you will enjoy the houses of lamentation. Here we get the houses of healing. What are they? What is it? It's a hospital. It's an infirmary. Okay? So we see Faramir's there, because he's taken back down. Who else do we see brought in? Eowyn brought, is brought in. Mary is finally, uh, here's a hobby. He's wounded, you know. Take him in. Okay? So, page 861. Aragorn, Eomir, Imrahil, Prince of Dol Amroth. Okay? They're all camped outside. And Eomir says, um, already you've raised the banner of the kings, displayed the tokens of Elendil's house. Aren't you going in the city? Because what really, uh, what helped turn the battle? Was it just the death of the captain of the nine? Okay. Riders of Rowan. When Aragorn passes through the paths of the dead, he has the dead meet with him at the stone of Eric. They promise to fulfill their oath from several thousand years ago. Okay? And they do. 
And they go before Aragorn and his company, and they go to the port where the Corsairs of Umbar are. And because they're dead, <laughs> they scare everybody off the boats. So Aragorn and his men take the boats, they sail up the river Anduin to outside Gondor. And what do the people of Gondor think? I mean, what are the black corsairs of Umbar? It's somebody rolling up the Jolly Roger. Not rolling up, you know, Stars and Bars or the United States or, not Stars and Bars, the Union Jack. It's, it's not, you know, Her Majesty's ship, etc. It's pirates. <laughs> black beard, blue beard, gray beard, whatever. Put them all the beards together. <laughs> Rainbow beard. This is not good, right? Instead... What gets flown up? The flag of Elendil. And again, as I said the other day, only one person can fly that flag. The person who should be king. Okay? So that's Aragorn's way of announcing the return of the king. Is he king yet? No, he's not. Can he, can he go inside Minas Tirith, go up to the Hall of Denethor, Find the big chair, look for the box underneath that has the crown, pull it out, dust it off. Gandalf put it on. No, no he can't. Certain things have to be done first. Okay. So, Hammer's like, come on, you're the king. I've seen you with that other vision, you know. Claim it. Aragorn, no. I deem the time unripe. I have no mind for strife except with our enemy. No. Because who does he think he might have strife with? Denethor's already dead at this point. Uh, yeah, it is, because Gandalf's already back out. Other people of the city might not quite accept it yet. In other words, the, the path has to be laid, you know. It, things have got to be done first. Protocol has to be followed. Like, I'm actually the one to be in charge. So... Aragorn says, I will go in. I'll go in as a captain of the Rangers. Okay? So, Aragorn is led in. He goes up to the um, halls of the dead, uh, not halls of the dead, houses of healing. We hear the old lady, Yorith, the old healer, and she says something about the hands of the king or the hands of the healer. Okay? So, Aragorn says, go get me some Athelas, which I just saw the other day, is the name of another, it's either a software company or, I mean, people are just stealing tokens and names and stuff. There's a subdivision going in over off Brinkley Road, right where Brinkley intersects with Manson Pike. Aragorn Way, Gandalf Court. <laughs> and I would bet you anything if the Tolkien estate knew about that, there would be the lawsuit of all lawsuits. Because they've gone after people in England who have opened pubs named the Green Dragon. They've shut them down. Okay? Um, it's, law, it's copyright infringement. Anyways, so Aragorn goes in and he gets the Atlas, has it broken, stewed in the water. He wipes Faramir's brow, page 866. So he does all this, and we're told, top of the page, Faramir stirs. And the light of knowledge and love was kindled in his eyes. What's the light of knowledge? The king. How does he know? Did Aragorn, you know, do this and mumble under his breath? I am king. You will believe me. You will, you know, you will serve me. No. I am the king. It's the steward recognizing his master. Because he is the steward now. My lord, you called me. I come. What does the king command? Is this just Aragorn and Faramir alone? No, because Yorith is in there too. And she goes, eh, what's that? King? She hears king. She goes outside. Gets on her Middle Earth version of Twitter. You know. So Aragorn says, walk no more in the shadows, but awake, you are weary, rest a while, take food, be ready when I return. 
In other words, get your strength back. I'm going to need you. I will. For who would lie idle when the king has returned? Farewell for a while. So he then goes to Eowyn. And he says, she should not. She was pitted against a foe beyond the strength of her mind or body. And yet what would have happened if it had been Aragorn there? Man, no man may hinder me. Not, not even if you're the future king. Right. So he says, she's a fair maiden. It's an evil doom that met her. She's the fairest lady of a house of queens. I know not how I should speak of her. That is, when I first looked on her and perceived her unhappiness, it seemed to me I saw a white flower standing straight and proud, shapely as a lily. In other words, nice bod. <laughs> and yet knew it was hard, cold, frigid, steel-like woman. Okay. Why do I say cold and frigid? Or maybe a frost that had turned its sap to ice. Her malady begins long before this day. Am I not Aylmer? And Aylmer says, Beats me, Lord. I always thought she was fine. <coughs> Until she met you. <laughs> Until she saw you. He said, I, I, I hold you blameless. It's not your fault, Aragorn. Yet I knew not that Eowyn, and my sister, was touched by any frost until she first looked on you. Not your fault. You can't help being you. <laughs> it's like if she had looked on any man who was the once and future king, she would have fallen in love with him. Okay? So, Gandalf goes on. Notice Gandalf intervenes. Why? He, he doesn't want... Aragorn to start having bad thoughts. Like, it's my fault because I didn't reciprocate. I got an R went up north. I can't have them both. Well, I can, but I can't, you know. Well, I can't Gandalf, yeah, I'm king. I can do whatever I like. But Gandalf says, Wormtongue. You have to remember Wormtongue. Her mind, like Theoden's mind, was poisoned by Wormtongue. Amir was silent, looked on his sister as if pondering anew all that they you know. And probably he's thinking, and if I ever see worm tongue again, he's dead. <laughs> so, Aragorn, I have maybe the power, excuse me, heal her body to recall her from the Dark Valley, but I don't know what she's going to wake up to. Uh, so he calls her, and then he tells Amir, you keep calling her. Okay? And Amir calls her out. She says, I'm weary, I must rest, tell me what of the Lord of the Mark, don't tell me that was a dream. He's dead. Notice Amber doesn't go, no, 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 we'll talk about that. Well, you know, you, you got to get better first. Then yeah, we'll talk about it. Uncle Theoden. He does the exact same thing we're going to see Dumbledore do later on with Harry Potter. He's going to say, no, nope, you got to relive it. you got to tell me everything that happened. So he says, no, nope, he's dead. But he bade me say farewell to Eowyn, dearer than daughter, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So, Aragorn then goes to Mary. Mary comes out, and what's Mary asked for? Pipe weed. I want to smoke. But then he remembers. No, I said I would smoke with Theoden. And Aragorn says, smoke happily in memory of him. And every time you light up, think of Theoden. Think what a good man, what a good king, etc., etc. Okay? 871. Aragorn is getting ready to kind of leave the house of healing. And we're told at the doors of the houses, many were already gathered to see Aragorn. They followed after him, and when at last he had supped, men came and prayed, <laughs> prayed that he would heal their kinsmen or their friends. And Aragorn arose and went out. He sent for the sons of Elrond, because Elrond's sons, being elves, they can, they've got healing powers. And what does he do? He goes throughout the city, and he heals people. Oddly enough, end of Harry Potter, what does Harry do after the final battle? He goes throughout Hogwarts, we're told, and he touches people and heals them. I mean, there's a reason why he's called the Chosen One. 
I'll just give a little hint. It's the anointed one. That's what chosen one means. That's what anointed one means. A messiah. <coughs> so, chapter 9, last debate. 15 minutes, 16 minutes. What's the last debate? What's the debate about? What they're going to do next. What, what do we do now? <laughs> we won a battle. Have they won the war? No. No. This is a skirmish. So, what do we do? Well, what are some of the options? Build up Minas Tirith. Rebuild the walls. Rebuild the walls outside the Pelennor fields. Rebuild the garrison at, at Osgiliath. Crank up the industri military industrial complex. Let's start putting out those Sherman tanks and M1s and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Let's get the Air Force going. Let's just, you know, totally go crazy with the military build. Let's nuke Get some nukes, you know, the whole nine yards. Why? What would they build? Fortress Gondor. In other words, we'll build, you know, it'll be a great wall. It'll be a beautiful, it'll be orange. You know? And it'll be what? So big, Sauron cannot get over it. It'll be the biggest wall. It'll be the biggest, it'll be huge. It'll be a beautiful wall. All over the world. What's the point? You can have the biggest wall, you can have the biggest air force, you can have the greatest nukes, you can have all the military armament in the world. And Gandalf points out what? It won't avail. <clears throat> It'll just be doing what? Keeping you in or them out. Keeping you in, them out? It'll just be buying time. It won't solve the ultimate problem. Okay? So they talk back and forth. Some say, well, okay, then what, do, what should we do? March out? That is, take what forces we have, get all the elves from Rivendell, let's come out, let's have one great big final, you know, Avengers in-game battle against Thanos, as it were. Yeah, kind of. With the hope what? That we will win. We will defeat him with arms. Gandalf says, page 878, Listen to the words of the steward of Gondor before he died. You may triumph on the fields of the Pelennor for a day, but against the power that hath now arisen, there is no victory. I do not bid you, Gandalf then says, I do not bid you despair as he did, but to ponder the truth. In other words, he wasn't wrong. The stones of seeing do not lie. That is, not even Sauron can make them lie. He can maybe by his will choose what things weaker minds shall see. And he chose Denethor to see what? Endless armies. So, hardly has our strength sufficed to beat off the first great assault. We defeated them here how? It's kind of luck. I mean, the writers were going to arrive just in time. Aragorn arrived just in time. There's not another Paths of the Dead, another ace Aragorn can pull out of his sleeve. Uh, you know, and we lost a lot. Okay? This war then is without final hope as Denethor perceived. Notice, this war is without final hope. We cannot win the war. Victory cannot be achieved by arms. Whether you sit here to endure siege after siege, or march out to be overwhelmed. So you can sit here, build up your defenses, and you're going to get worn down and defeated. Or we can march out, take the battle with Sauron, and we're going to die. <clears throat> What's that sound like then? We're screwed. Rock, hard place. So, Imriel, so we should retreat. Gandalf, no, that would be no new council. I mean, isn't that what's been done for the last several hundred years? No, I said, this would be prudent. That is, building up our defenses and everything. It would be prudent. It's wisdom. I don't counsel prudence. Now's not the time for prudence. Prudence is kind of what Denethor was saying. Take the ring, take it way, 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 way down, and put it there. No, Gandalf said. I said victory could not be achieved by arms. I still hope for victory, but not by arms. 
So if he hopes for victory, but not by arms, how is it? Is it by Frodo's feet? <laughs> it is by the destruction of the ring. What is it really the destruction of? It's the renunciation of power. In other words, the only way we are going to defeat power is by giving up power. Notice, it's, it's not a physical, it's not a material thing. It's essentially a spiritual idea. Okay? For into the midst of all these policies, he says, comes the ring. He says, eh, some of you know some of it, so I'll tell you the right thing. Frodo, halfling has it, and he's in Mordor now. If he does what he's supposed to do, and the ring is destroyed, page 879, five lines down. If it's just four lines down. If it is destroyed, he will fall. His fall will be so low that none can foresee his arising ever again. That is, Sauron will be so weakened. It's like 99% of his strength, gone. And he'll be a mere shadow of what he was. For he will lose the best part of that strength that was native to him in his beginning. Native is restated by in his beginning. Because native and in the beginning means what? As he was created with. He put most of the power he was created with as an angelic being into this thing. So if it's destroyed, that's destroyed. And all that was made or begun with that power will crumble. He will be maimed forever, becoming a mere spirit of malice that gnaws itself in the shadow, cannot again grow or take shape. And so a great evil of this world will be removed. Notice what he does not say there. He doesn't say all evil will be removed. Several people, many commentators, after George Bush... W, addressed Congress after 9-11, September 20, 2001. Many commentators, left and right, said it was one of the greatest speeches ever delivered by an American president. But he said one utterly foolish, asinine thing. He said, you know, we're going to have this great war on terror. GWOT. And what is its goal? Bush said, to wipe out terror. Well, that is an asinine. You can't do that. Why? Well, let's let's learn from another great political theorist, Karl Marx. <clears throat> Marx says, in order for Marxism, in order for communism to work, what must you do? You have to have the liberation, essentially, of the proletariat. But how must that happen? They've got to overcome the masters, the producers, etc. Okay, so that everybody thinks and believes and understands the same. That is, let's say all of you become good card-carrying communists. But Jacob over here, he says, no, this is my phone, and I want to keep it. And you all go, but it should be shared equally among us all. So what do all of you do? Because in order for that society to work, everybody has got to be in agreement. Gone. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, what's kind of the idea there is everybody has got to think alike. Okay. So he says, other evils there are that may come. But back to Bush. When Bush said, you know, we're going to eradicate terror, you can't. Because what, I mean, you can eradicate everybody else, right? So you're, down, you're left with two people. But let's say you only have so much supplies. Well, two go in, one comes out. That's the only way you eradicate terror. And even then, the, the unknown is still the, like the ultimate terror. Even if you got Well, yeah, I mean, yourself, you, could, you, you could talk about that, but I'm talking about the terror caused by other people because I have something, Camille wants it. No, you can't have it. But she's stronger than I am. She puts a bullet in my head. Well, she gets it. But then Olivia wants it. And, you know, I'm the domino's fall. But notice, an evil will be destroyed. You can't destroy all terror. Other evils there are that may come. Sauron is himself but a servant 
or emissary, a messenger. It is not our part to master all the tides of the world. Tides there means times. We can't solve the problems of 20 years from now. Why? It's an obvious reason. We don't know. We don't know what they are. We don't know what they are. People 50 years ago had no idea what the problems we would have today are. Okay. Well, some did. Not me. So he says, we've got to solve what's our problem today. Uh, so on. The ring. We must do what is in us for the succor of those years wherein we are set. Succor means comfort. Uprooting the evil in the fields that we know so that those who live after may have clean earth to till. Now keep in mind, when is Tolkien probably writing this? Or at least the first draft during the Second World War. <coughs> What's the evil in the fields we know? Well, they're marching across France. Okay. He had a son in the RAF. Stationed in South Africa. So he didn't see a lot of active duty, but Tolkien knew what war was like from World War I. So we got to do that battle now. That's, you know, Jacob mentioned ISIS earlier. That's the ISIS problem. I mean, the Taliban is still a problem. Even if we sign a peace agreement and we get out of Afghanistan, in my own personal opinion, we should have been out of Afghanistan 10 years ago. Okay? But if we do, what's going to have to happen? have to keep an eye on what's going on so that another Osama bin Laden doesn't rise up in their midst, so to speak. So he says, we got to clean the fields so that those who live after may have clean earth to till. What the weather is, they have not our problem. Sauron knows this. Sauron knows all this. Sauron knows there's only one way we can get victory over him. The destruction of the ring. Notice what Sauron isn't doing. What should he do? If he really knows, that's the one thing. Post up guards outside the you build the biggest, highest, strongest, most fortified wall around Mount Doom. <laughs> you make, you know, laser trip with the whole nine yards. You make sure nobody gets in there. But he doesn't. Why? Because he thinks other people think like he thinks. <clears throat> We're going to hear that exact same idea. Harry Potter. Mad-Eye Moody is going to say to Harry, decent people are so easy to trick. Why? Because they think other people are also decent. But if you're not decent, oh, you can just play cat and the mouse with decent people because they think you're going to be honorable. And you wait and you shove them in the middle of the kidneys. So, that's what he says. Aragorn, you used the palantir, didn't you? Even though I told you not to. <laughs> Aragorn, yep, sure did. Bottom 879. <laughs> Deemed the time was ripe. Uh, it was 10 days since the ring bearer went. Too seldom has he been challenged since he returned to his tower. Though if I had foreseen how swift would be his onset and answer, that is, what did he show him? Remember when they were making their way towards the falls of Rauros? They saw those two huge statues, Elendil, Isildur. Get online, look for the image by the Brothers Hildebrand, like from their 1978 Tolkien calendar. Nerd, I still have it, okay? Beautiful image. He's saying, I kind of went, Papa, <laughs> great Papa, son, What did that cause Sauron to do? He baited him. He baited him, and Sauron took the bait, hook, line, and sinker, and has thrown his armies out. Because he knows there's a future king coming. I, I, I gotta stop him before, right? So, Gandalf says, but Sauron isn't sure yet. Sauron doesn't know who has the ring. As he, Gandalf says, there are some among us who could wield it, such as Elisar, Dunedin, <laughs> the future king, or me. me. <laughs> I was dead. I'm alive again. Or Elrond, or Galadriel, or Círdan the shipwright, or Glorfindel. 
Hell, maybe even Aylmere can hold it for a while. Okay? Therein lies all our hope. Why? Because Sauron will never even consider that we would do something as foolish as we've done. It's crazy. Right? Just so crazy. Because it's crazy. Nobody in his or her right mind would do this. And we'll stop there. We'll pick up with that, and I'll kind of link it to Tolkien's Catholicism, uh, whatever day that is, Tuesday. I might send out over the weekend, I was thinking about this this morning, I might send out the topics, the exam topics over the weekend. Um, still have the same amount of time. Still have, you know, they'll be due a week from whenever we finish the Lord of the Rings. When Hopefully that's going to be Tuesday. Just giant asterisk after the word whenever. But we'll see.